Good morning. We welcome all to our service of Christian worship led from St Andrews with Castlegate United Reformed Church in Nottingham on this Sunday the 28th of June 2020. We understand we are gathering a congregation from far and wide with our virtual services and we welcome both old and new friends this morning. In particular, we are grateful to the Reverend Paulina Hwavichka for leading our worship today, and we offer a special welcome to her pastorates at the Nottingham Lutheran Church and St Paul's Corby, whom she has invited to share worship with us this day. This is the 15th week since our church building was closed for full worship during the lockdown, with all its attendant negatives and positives. As recent government guidance begins to open up new possibilities for us all, we will be considering ways in which we can continue to offer worship to God in such ways that equally offer a welcome to all. We offer our thanks to all who have contributed to this service today and particularly to Paulina for preparing and leading worship this morning in what we anticipate to be a thought-provoking and interesting service, valuing all of God's children. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I welcome you on the third Sunday after Trinity and fourth Sunday after Pentecost. I hope this recording will reach many people from our churches, but also quite a few friends in the ecumenical circle and people who are on the move and listen these days to many different services to find something new and refreshing and perhaps a community, a new community to join in the future. I wish you a blessed service today. Let us begin with the hymn number 625, God of Freedom, God of Justice. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, to you be glory and praise forever. Our God is gracious and comes to us in mercy. When we wander far from him, he comes to meet us and restores our broken lives. Let us therefore come before him in confidence and declare our sin and guilt, trusting in his strength and grace. Let us confess together. I confess to you, Holy God, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed. 
For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, look on me in mercy and forgive my sin. Hear, O Lord, the private confession of every heart. You have prayed for the forgiveness of your sin. I therefore declare at our Lord's command, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us listen now to the first reading from the Gospel. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes God's messenger because he is God's messenger will share in his reward. And whoever welcomes a good man because he is good will share in his reward. You can be sure that whoever gives even a drink of cold water to one of the least of these my followers because he is my follower, will certainly receive a reward. The prayer for and with young people. We welcome everything that comes to us today because we know it's for our healing. We welcome all thoughts, feelings, emotions, persons, situations, and conditions. God of love and grace, you gave us heart of compassion and empathy. You enabled us to listen, to feel, to act, to help, to support, to make beautiful things, to make life of those who suffer brighter and nicer. We ask you to continue fulfilling us with your love and grace, that we long to learn more and new things, and that we understand there is no space for hate and discrimination in our hearts and minds. All people are your creation. All people are equal, regardless age, color, ethnicity, and sexuality. Help us, O God. In your love. Amen. Let us sing our next hymn, number 647. In Christ there is no East or West.
Then, in the presence of the priests and of all the people who were standing in the temple, I said to Hananiah, Wonderful! I hope the Lord will do this. I certainly hope he will make your prophecy come true and will bring back from Babylonia all the temple treasures and all the people who were taken away as prisoners. But listen to what I say to you and to the people. The prophets who spoke long ago before my time and yours predicted that war, starvation and disease would come to many nations and powerful kingdoms. But a prophet who predicts peace can only be recognised as a prophet whom the Lord has truly sent when that prophet's predictions come true. The prophet who prophesies peace will be recognised as one truly sent by the Lord. Love and grace of the Lord be with you today. You will be surprised to know that today's service is received by people from at least 20 different nationalities. Whole Britain is represented within our listeners today, some other European countries and Scandinavia, some African countries, some Northern and Southern American countries representatives are here with us today. Real crowd and manifoldness. We didn't turn the sound on to celebrate differences in our many traditions and backgrounds. We are joining this worship to praise the Lord, to thank him for this manifoldness, to listen to his word, where he wants us to celebrate freedom in him, and to praise his gift of the ability to reform our churches, institutions and ourselves on a daily basis. To reform today, we have to become one in this very dangerous world, led by many nationalistic leaders in the midst of civil wars and the nuclear ideas, between one terrorist attack and the other, while racism is still observed and watched by the whole world, while justice is missing in so many different places. In the time of Brexit, in the time of exclusion, and a rising anti-LGBT plus campaigns. Yet, the God we believe in or search for is God of love, God of freedom, God of justice, and God of peace. How come then the world, his creation, stands in opposite to his principles in so many acts of violence, misunderstandings, and boredom? It is easy to find a guilty person, people, those who are responsible, perhaps some criminals, those who are greedy and ungodly, lazy people, or maybe famous and rich people. Oh yes, we even know where to search for them. But the prophet's final pledge today is peace, not a search for a guilty party. Peace and reconciliation. And it is not easy, but unfortunately inevitable to learn that before reforming society and bringing the society and all your communities into peace, we need to reform ourselves first. We need to learn new things, new approaches, history. We need to learn to understand psychology and soci sociology. We don't need to be academics for that, but we need to open ourselves to continue with self-education. Do not let the learning process 
to end together with your last school term. God gives you freedom, one of the biblical principles. But this freedom is not from being a human being, not from duties, responsibilities, good but hard works, not from learning new things, but freedom from evil, freedom from disbelief, freedom from the power of underestimation of yourself and the others, freedom from laziness, boredom, from judgmental approach, freedom from lack of gentleness and love. Whether we realize or not, we and most of the people in the world long for peace and freedom. There are, of course, different pictures of peace and freedom and different ways to achieve it. The greatest peace of all is the peace that everyone longs for, but it passes all human understanding. It's this peace that Jesus gives to his followers just after he has risen from the grave. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In many cultures, peace comes out in their greeting. Jews greet each other with shalom. Jesus, as a Jew, also used this greeting. Muslim world says salam alaikum. But there is anything but peace between Jews and Arabs in many parts of the world, we would say. We also say after Jesus, peace be with you. And we exchange peace in our churches. But is there anything we can observe which follows this famous biblical sentence? When we welcome people with the words, peace be with you. What kind of greeting is this? When we exchange the peace with the others in churches, what is this? What is the meaning of it? It's not only an exercise we have during the service to wake you up. It is indeed a good news. The good news you yourself spread. It's pure gospel. It is the absolution. The first thing the risen Lord Jesus does when meeting the women and the disciples after the resurrection. Peace be with you. Now, this doesn't mean that your work will suddenly stop to be stressful. It's no guarantee that all your relationships will be smoothed out or that your neighborhood will be free of crime or that your country will never go to war. But in the midst of life's turmoil, the presence of the risen Savior creates a peace that passes all human understanding. The peace of Christ means entering into the fullness of life with God in Christ, with life's positives and negatives together. You don't have to be super spiritual to know God's peace. You don't have to be a guru, a master, a teacher. Little children can know it and can share it. God grants us this peace here in worship today. And we can receive it if only we open our hearts and minds despite the uncertain times, despite the COVID-19, despite the financial problems so many of us reached because of the virus, despite of the ambulance sirens screaming in the distance, despite of hate and aggression we see on our screens and maybe even in our neighborhoods. The peace of the Lord runs like a golden thread 
throughout our worship and is here to extend into our daily lives. Recently, people march for peace and justice. They say, enough to the violence after the death of George Floyd, who if called blood was killed by the police in the US. Like many others before him, he dies because he's black. As you know, together with my husband, we took part in the anti-racism protest in Nottingham Forest. Over 4,000 people came together, white, black and Asian. No justice, no peace, people shouted at this protest. Most of the speeches and shouts included the word peace. It sounded like it is the most precious commodity we need right now. Why only now for the first time in the history we observe so many white people joining this protest? Why we've been saying in the past it is not our problem. God is always reaching to the oppressed, to the humiliated and those in prison. Why did we understand it so late? And the process is not where the strife for peace and justice should end. It's just the beginning for us all to work together for the better future, for the future generations. Sometimes we don't realize that peace requires forgiveness and it is difficult. Sometimes we don't realize that peace requires learning new knowledge, new understanding, change of mind, change of perception. But you all exercise it in your home, in your congregation, in your workplace, in your family, neighborhood and circle of your friends. You are the true peacemaking people and peace-sharing force in the world. Without that, we do not have relationships. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you, said our Lord, just before entrusting his church with the ministry of peaceful reconciliation. God's peace is abundant and free. Divine forgiveness is God's gift to the world. It brings us into the presence of God. It destroys death and guilt. It dispels fear and gloom. Through it, the risen Lord brings peace to soothe all grief and pain. Through peace consists in knowing and being totally in harmony with God and his creation through the presence of the risen Lord Jesus. Fear, violence and sin vanish in the face of this divine peace, which we need to accept and open our arms to receive it. If we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten that we belong to each other. Peace begins with a smile. Peace cannot be kept by force, it can only be achieved by understanding. If you want to make peace with your enemy, you have to work with your enemy. Then he becomes your partner. The moment I have realized God is sitting in the temple of every human body, 
The moment I stand in reverence before every human being and see God in him, in her, that moment I am free. I am free and liberated by God's grace. With this beautiful and meaningful bunch of definitions of peace, we are coming to the end of our contemplations. But I have some questions, a homework for you. Please think how to answer them with honesty. You may write it down and send it to me or one of your ministers. Knowing about this supreme gift, God's peace, what are you going to do with this knowledge? What kind of peacemaker you are or you want to become? What kind of peace you can make with a stranger who doesn't speak your language? Will you join the anti-racist protests with your black neighbors and friends and claim that the time for injustice and silence has passed? Now, since we are not able to exchange the sign of peace in our churches by shaking hands, what would you do? And what are you already doing instead? These are my questions to you. The final blessing of every worship closes with those words again. The Lord bless you and give you peace, to which you all answer the acclamation of faith. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Loving and forgiving God, we come to you today recognizing that in matters of ethnicity we have no choice. We are who we have been made to be. Before you we rejoice at our diversity 
and our hearts lift as your great vision of a worshipping multitude gathered from every nation, every tribe, people and language. But nonetheless, we recognize that our present reality is very far from this ideal. We have each of us been shaped by different forces. Some of us have been ground down, while others have been built up. Some of us have been worn away or have become fractured and broken. Some of us have found life a burden rather than a joy. None of us have experienced the perfect life. Some of us have been born white in a world where whiteness confers privilege. Others of us have been born black in a world where darker skin carries disadvantage. We know that this is not the world as you would have it be. But it is our world, your creation, and it has been our experience. So before you and in the name of Jesus Christ, who loves all people equally, regardless of ethnicity, gender, social status or sexuality, we come now to recommit ourselves to your vision of the world. We, your creation, one race, human being. We come now to pray your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven and to offer ourselves once to live out your coming kingdom of equality and justice in our lives, in our churches and in our communities. We confess our failures to speak out against injustice. We confess those times when, as individuals and as churches, we have witnessed the fracturing of humanity along ethnic grounds, and yet have remained silent. We confess those times when we have been the powerful ones and have chosen to withhold that power whilst another human suffered. May we create spaces for reconciliation. Please help us, O oh Lord. We pray for our churches. May they become places of reconciliation where each human soul is valued and where equality in Christ is a reality in our midst. Forgive us those times where we do not live out our calling as your people. May our churches model the new humanity of Christ to those in the communities where we live. We pray for our communities and people we were not able to reach yet. Where there is division, may we bring restoration. Where there is inequality, may we bring justice. Where there is powerlessness, may we lift up the brokenhearted. Where there is damage, may we bring healing. In the name of the one who sets us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing our last hymn, number 643, when Israel was in Egypt's land.
receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.